Hi everyone, Monica Moore, nurse practitioner at Illumin Fertility. And on this version of Ask Monica, we are gonna be talking about what happens during that two week wait, that notorious time between either embryo transfer if you're doing IVF or insemination or intercourse if you're not doing IVF. <clears throat> and I can tell you in um, one word what happens is anxiety usually because what is going on in the body? What can I do? What can I not do? So uh, just a little brief explanation of sort of implantation. It's a communication between the embryo, which is now called a blastocyst, it's a stage of implantation, and the uterine lining. And they sort of have a conversation where the uterine lining says, I'm gonna let you in, and the embryo says, I am good enough or what we call competent enough to be let in. Because the uterus's whole job is to keep out foreign bodies like viruses, bacteria, um, so it's very particular in who it lets in. So with that in mind, the um, embryo spends about 72 hours in the uterine cavity, once it's a blastocyst, before implanting. And its main nourishment in the uterine cavity is at that point in time, the maternal bloodstream and what's going on at the level of the uterus. So we are very um, particular uh, about checking your uterus prior to a cycle within a certain period of time, often that's about six months, just to make sure that there's nothing that we see that could prevent or hinder implantation, like a polyp, fibroid, um, scar tissue, uh, bacteria. Assuming that all the testing was negative, um, a lot of people will say, well, can I move around? You know, can I, um, I, I have a cold, I have a fever. Um, and really there is nothing that you are go can do that is going to disrupt this potential implantation from taking place. That's just normal activities. If you decide that you're going, and, and recent studies have actually confirmed this, recent studies have looked at, um, is do I need to lay down and have complete bed rest? So that's immediately afterwards. The time between the, the two week wait, or what we call until the pregnancy test are about 11 days, nine to 11 days after embryo transfer can be very difficult because not only are you thinking about what can I do, it's what am I feeling and is this feeling representative of implantation? And I can tell you that it's very difficult to tell. Many people are on hormones such as estrogen and progesterone that can create a feeling in the body of early pregnancy. So it's di very difficult to discern a differentiate if you feel like you're pregnant or if you feel like you're getting your period um, from um, because the medications can confuse things. Um, what I will tell you is I often tell people to go about their life as much as possible, to do whatever they can do to kind of distract themselves, keep themselves busy um, until the pregnancy test. I also tell people to have a conversation with your nurse or navigator prior to the pregnancy test about what time potentially assuming normal work hours and how you would like to be notified of your pregnancy test results. I think many people going through this cycle often feel pretty helpless during this time, just sitting around waiting. When you were previously coming in for ultrasounds and our blood work, the waiting part can be really hard. So the part that you have control over is how do you wanna receive this news, this very important news. Uh, I have many patients or, um, who are teachers and they say I have a free period between 2, 10, and 3 o'clock, or I'm out of school at 2.30. And if your nurse uh, is in the office until 4 or 5, you can make a plan for that phone call to occur during your free time. You can make a plan for that phone call to be left on a voicemail. Um, you can make a plan for that to be emailed to you in our secure server. So uh, there are some options, but I do want to mostly reassure you that although this two-week time is difficult to wait, it's so hard to wait until the pregnancy test, um, something that you did during that two week time, let's say you ran after something, you had a fall, you had a cold, um, you sneezed and coughed a lot, is not doing anything to disrupt implantation. So um, continue uh, leaving us your questions. I hope this was helpful and see you on the next edition. Thanks so much.